Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernardo from the BTN HD, and yes, another beautiful video request. And this video request is uh, about AppV uh, application virtualization. And this particular user wants me to do or is looking for videos on how to install AppV on Windows Server 2008 R2 and Windows 7. And he wants me to stream uh, Internet Explorer 8 and as well as Java version 7. And so let's 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 do this. So uh, I haven't done application virtualization at V for a while. And but for what I've remember is you need to get MDOP, which is MDOP, which stands for Microsoft Desktop Optimization Package. You need to download that. Uh, the only way that you get yourself a, a copy is either you're part of a TechNet or MSDN or you have a volume license uh, account with Microsoft. And once you get yourself a copy of that, you download it. And uh, as you can see, I have a Windows 2008 R2 Enterprise Edition. Uh, I haven't fully activated because this is my testing. And uh, best practice is once you get your machine, make sure you push out all the patches. And with at V, you guys need to have a SQL database. now. Best practice is if you have a SQL database, you have it on its own physical or virtual machine. Uh, Active Directory as well, own physical machine. This machine that I'm using right here, guys, has Active Directory, has SQL database. I'm going to install the AppV console management. I'm going to install the AppV uh, streaming server. And on later videos, I'm going to show you guys how to capture a sequence or the program. Most likely, you know, the, the video request was uh, how to capture IE8. Because he wants to run IE8 alongside with IE9 and as well as do a sequence on Java 7. So I have a SQL, I have my SQL database already up and running. Uh, so hopefully you guys do understand how to do that. If you don't know how to build a Microsoft SQL database, let me know. And I'll create a video for you guys. Uh, so I'm going to close this up. And you guys need to have a, a bunch of roles and features before you even start installing your app v console manager on your server so let's start our server manager once it loads up i'm going to expand it a little bit and you want to get into your roles and within roles you want to add a role okay we want to hit next and within here you want to add web server iis hit next we're going to hit next now there's a bunch of role services for your uh, web server that you need for it to work properly now for what I remember I think you need ASP.NET add all the required roles uh, ASP and let's go a little bottom I like to do a basic authentication Windows authentication for management tools uh, you need IS scripts and tools you definitely need this because if not if you don't have your management scripts and tools, you're going to get a nasty little error stating something about it cannot create the virtual directory within your web server. So that's a no-no. Uh, management servers, I like all the IIS management uh, tools. So just select, just select management tools and just have everything selected. You really need to have all this stuff uh, selected. And I don't think you need anything else. I'm just double checking to make sure. Uh, because when I install it, I want it to be perfect. You know, not everything is perfect, but you know, you, you guys kind of understand where I'm coming from. Uh, we're gonna hit next, and we're gonna hit install. And again, this is one of these moments. Just uh, get yourself a cup of coffee and just chillax until it uh, finished installing. And we're back. Yes, awesome. Installation has succeeded. It's awesome. I did get a warning. Again, this is all my testing environment. I'm testing this stuff out. But best practice. Most likely you guys pushed out all your Windows updates on your server. Hopefully you did. Please do. Uh, and if if you don't, please do it now. Okay. Uh, I'm going to hit close. So we have all our roles and features already installed. I have my trusty MDOP CD already installed. I believe uh, we are in 2012. I, I couldn't get myself uh, a copy of 2012, but it's basically the same procedure. Uh, so I'm going to right click on this and do an open autoplay and we're gonna run the launcher 
and with the MDOP, you get a bunch of cool items. Uh, at these, what we're going to do now, you, you're able to do enterprise desktop virtualization, which is, uh, I think, is MedV. Uh, diagnostics and recovery tool sets. That's pretty cool. You could use this kind of thing with MDT. But let's uh, let's get back into what we need to do. We need to do at V for desktops, and you get a bunch of other stuff on this particular CD. Uh, you get the SP for 4.5 and 4.6. I'm gonna do the latest one, even though 4.6 is not the latest latest one. But again, if you guys do get a copy of 2012, it's the same thing. So we are going to install the management server first. We're gonna click on that. Installation wizard will pop up. It's gonna start extracting all the files that it needs on the tenth folder for it to run. It's gonna start calculating any space. And again, guys, I don't recommend you installing your app v management server within your Active Directory or the server where you have your SQL server. Okay, I'm doing all this in one box is because I don't have the luxury of having multiple machines to do all this stuff for you guys. So we're gonna hit next. We're gonna set the license terms and, and conditions. I don't want to do Microsoft updates, but again, it, it's recommended, and I do recommend you guys to do this. Okay. But for this video, let's keep it short. I'm gonna hit next. Uh, give your username. This most likely will be whatever generic company username that you use in your company. I'm gonna Bernardo because of my name and my organization, which is BJ Tech News. Awesome. And we're gonna hit next. Typical. Hit next. Now the servers, most likely it's not you're not gonna see it on the drop down, so you have to use the following host name. Now, because I am uh, running my management server locally, I'm able to do a local host as my server name. But if you have a SQL database that you want to use to attach your app v server to, most likely you could use your DNS name of your server or the IP address. But make sure 1433 port is open or you allowed it to go through your network to hit your SQL database, okay? So we're gonna hit next, and if everything goes well, you should go to this part right here. I don't want to use any of the existing database, but I do wanna create a new database, an AdV virtual database. So we're gonna hit next on that. Now, this right here, all this gibberish here is actually the name of my computer. I haven't changed the virtual machine name, but most likely, uh, whatever name you gave your app fee, you're gonna see it right here. That's your server certificate. So we're gonna hit next. Uh, by default, this is the port, the TC port uh, for your app v clients are gonna be talking to. So if, if you wanna change it, go for it. If not, use 322. I'm gonna leave it at the default and I'm gonna hit next. Now the group name. Now specify the administrator group for the server. You have a bunch of people in your group, IT people, that is going to manage this uh, at the management server. Hey, add a group. Uh, for this demonstration, I'm just going to add domain admins. Everyone that's in part of the domain admins will have access to it. Hit next. Now, if you are providing these uh, virtualized apps to a specific group, this is what you do. Or if you want to do it more of a, uh, you create this global group and whoever you want to have access or not have access or to uh, have your app stream down to their machine you can add them into the group rather than constantly going into your management server and adding people so for this purpose on this video I'm just gonna do domain users right whoever's on domain users is gonna have access or I'm able to stream the app to their machine locally so I'm gonna hit next now <clears throat> For what I've seen in the past, or when I dealt with App V in my last, last, last job, uh, they actually provided, they didn't store the content stuff locally inside the App V server. What they did is they stored the apps or the virtualized sequence apps within the domain controls of each office. The reason why is because everyone has access, not everyone, but all the machines have access to the domain controller, right? When a user logs in, they're actually talking to Active Directory, your domain controller, to authenticate the machine to go through. So that's why they actually store all that stuff. For this video, I'm gonna leave it the default as a local C drive, but best practice is you want to drop this in a location where your users have full access. So create a file share that everyone has access to so you could drop your content in because most likely, 
when you are uh, streaming these apps to your local machines and the local machine doesn't have access to this particular file, you're going to have problems. Okay, so I'm going to leave it as is. So I'm going to hit next and we're going to hit install. And we're back. Awesome. I love this feeling. Uh, I love the feeling when this, the wizard says completed. Uh, it hasn't been uh, premature terminated because of some problems, right? So we're going to hit finish. And it's going to want you to restart your machine. So let's restart the machine. Yes, and we're back. And that's it, guys. Ah, just joking with you. Uh, not really yet. Uh, the next thing that I'm going to show you on the next video is I'm going to show you how to install the streaming server. Really simple. So it's not that hard. Again, best practice is, as I told you before, is to install these two on separate physical machines. Because uh, it's... I don't know. It's it's one of those things that I like to do. Do things physical machines have it on its own box so you won't have any conflicts. So one last thing before I let you guys go, if you go into Start and Administrative Tools, you're gonna see a nice little new feature within uh, Administrative Tools, and it's the Application Virtualization Management Console. So I'm gonna right click on this and add it to the taskbar, and we're gonna start it for the first time. Now, once it loads up, you probably say to yourself, uh, Bernardo, that's it. This is what we're going to get. No, not really. You actually have to connect to your application virtualization system. You would think that Microsoft would be nice to us that when you start your application management console, it will have everything pre-populated on the left side, right? Not really. Uh, so let's connect to your application virtualization. When you click on this option right here, it's going to pop up. What's your web service host name? Now, to keep everything nice and easy, you're just going to just type in local host. We're not using a secure connection, so just uncheck that. And we're going to use the current Windows account that's on the actual app VBox. And we're going to hit OK. Now, if everything goes well, you should see on the left side right here, a bunch of cool things pop up. Excellent. As you can see, local host. So let's expand and see what we have. Wow. We have applications. And this is where this is the node where you're gonna have all the all the applications that you actually captured in sequence. You're gonna have them here. Any file type associations would be here. Packages in here. Application licensing. Uh, most likely, if you guys are <clears throat> trying to sequence Office or Acrobat Professional, you have to have a particular license for it to work. Uh, server groups. These will be your server groups. So this is awesome. Oh, so excited. Uh, and that's it, guys. That is about it. Uh, so this is the end of this part right here. I think on the next video, I'm going to show you guys how to install the at the streaming uh, server portion of this little uh, series of at V. Uh, if you guys have any questions, leave them at the bottom of the description. Do not forget about hitting that like button. And also, don't forget about going into Twitter and following me at BJ Tech News. Again, twitter.com at BJ Tech News because uh, when I start pushing out these videos and you want to know when they're out, uh, I do push them out in my Twitter account so it will notify you. And uh, catch you guys later. Peace out.